Hello there Sagittarius, welcome to your October 2019 tarot reading. It has been a while since I did a, a reading for you guys, so I'm really happy to be able to catch up with you all. I hope you all are doing well, and I apologize for my absence for the past few months. I hope that this reading resonates with you, that it also helps you navigate the energies. So, um, let me talk about what I sense um, when I was shuffling out the cards, okay, and then we'll talk about this uh, spread. Needless to say, I feel like this spread is very, very focused on all the important love relationships in your life, okay? And I feel like we have four people here, like four court cards indicating people. And we have water signs, earth signs, and air signs. So you're dealing with a lot of people. And for some of you, you might be dealing with all three of them. Others, you might be dealing with facets of each of these characters. And then while others still might be dealing with like only one of these scenarios. But I feel like this is a month where it is very much about, you know, um, figuring out uh, the relationships in your life that are worth salvaging, the relationships that are worth still being in, and the relationships that have been draining. So I feel like there's a, a lot of uh, reassessment going on here. Uh, you know, Libra is about the, the balancing scale, and as we head into Libra season, I feel like the imbalances, unequal give and take, lack of reciprocity in relationships, in, in all partnerships, in, in all of our communication with another person will be very evident and so it's a time for us to really take stock of what's not working or what is working and to figure out solutions to balance out the give and take in relationships okay so i feel like for a lot of the signs um all for a lot of people in general everything that has happened since the month of january moving into now in the month of october I feel like you're getting signs and, and messages along the way to indicate to you what is lacking, what's not working in your relationship. And I feel that it's time for you to take the knowledge and the wisdom with you and try to either fix the relationship if you are still in love, leave the relationship if you're no longer in love, and seek the right partner that will give you that sense of equal balance, give and take, and reciprocity so that you can move on to better relationships. So it is an important uh, month to put theory into practice, to figure out what you have already learned and how to implement that into the world, okay? Um, so when I was shuffling out the spread for you, I saw uh, two images. The first one is... Um, I see, so I, I see you sitting at a table and it looks like a karaoke bar. There's like a, a stage, a makeshift stage. It's not a platform or anything. It's just an area they cleared out. There's a microphone in the middle and uh, you're sitting at a table and you're looking at somebody. Their name is called up and so they, it's like an open mic night. And it's at a bar, you're having your drink and you're a man. Like, um, I, I can't really make out the features, but he's at a table looking at the microphone. The name is being called on uh, on the mic. And the, the next person who's supposed to sing a song steps up to the mic. The music starts, the, the, the soundtrack, the cues, the, the lyric cues start. And this person is uh, ridden with stage fright. And the person didn't sing on cue, like the person just didn't sing, okay? So then it, it, it leaves that air, um, the, the scene kind of breaks up and then another scene emerged. And I'm going to talk about the first scene first before I go into the next scene. So I feel like the concept about being overwhelmed with fear, being overwhelmed with emotions, being overwhelmed with how they feel, being like just um, disoriented, the spotlight's on them, they don't really know how to react. So I feel like for many of you, this is not you, this is a person that you are dealing with, okay? I'm getting the word agoraphobic, somebody who is like not great around big crowds, large uh, groups of people. Um, they don't operate at their best when they are the spotlight is shown on them and I feel like you know they try their best to try to break out of these um, antisocial behaviors or stage fright or whatever it is uh, they're trying to you know um, they're, they're trying to kind of like break out of their own shell and to do something where it incorporates other people but they're not able to overcome social anxiety 
And I feel like the social anxiety is a big、um, part of their personality. They're extremely introverted, possibly very, very shy.、Um, they like when you look at them, you might not feel like they have any type of social anxieties because you know when you're in like a, a close relationship with them, they don't exhibit signs of social anxiety. But I feel like when it's when they're out in public, when they're dealing with strangers, when they're dealing with just large crowds. They get very, very shy, and they shy away from big gatherings. And so, for some of you guys, if especially if you have a lot of like water placement in your chart, so for example, if you have like water, like Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer as your sun, moon, or rising, or if you have a lot of planets in a water sign, this might be you, where you're feeling a little bit disconnected from people, mainly because you might have social anxiety, you might have.、Um, Issues when it comes to、um, operating in a large crowd, being、um, in a position where you're interacting with a lot of people, or you are kind of like front and center, and people are looking at you, and you know, all eyes are on you. It can feel very uncomfortable, and to a certain extent, most of us. I, I feel like the majority of people.、Um, aren't great with like、um, you know the,、um, public speaking. Always provokes like anxiety, but I feel like you're either dealing with somebody, or this is triggered in you in a situation that where you, you haven't experienced it in the past. So I feel something coming in. Okay, I'm also getting the word tongue tie, stage fright, and tongue tie. Okay, so it could be either of those things. Um. I strongly feel that you are dealing with somebody who has social anxiety, who has a lot to say, and yet they're very, very tongue-tied because their emotions get in the way. That's what I'm feeling, and I feel like、uh, their method of of expression has always been through either song, music, or other avenues of self-expression. You know, painting, dancing, whatever it is. But I feel like when it comes to one-on-one -on -one interpersonal communication,、um, there's something here that's preventing them from expressing how they really feel. And so I feel like, as a Sagittarius, it has been very frustrating for you to deal with somebody like this, because Sagittarius, you're very no holds barred. You're very like.、Um, You know, you're very uncensored. You would speak your mind. You state your opinion. You want to be heard, and I feel like you know you're you're very like no nonsense. If somebody ticks you off, you will give them a piece of your mind right away. And the beauty about fire signs, in particular, is that、um, when someone or a situation upsets you, you blow over. Like you, you blow up. But then you get over it. You don't hold things in. You know, you you don't hold grudges. You don't hold things in. You don't hold your emotions in. And I feel like it's a very healthy way to live. But you're dealing with someone who is like your counter opposite. Okay, like your your a counterpart that's like your total opposite. Excuse me. And they hold a lot of stuff in. They they they're used to repressing, repressing, repressing. They don't say what's on their mind. And I feel like a lot of it is、uh, they don't say what's on their mind out of fear, out of judgment, out of like you know、um, having those feelings or those words be used against them later. So you know, in this day and age with social media, with、um, digital communication, a lot of things can be taken out of context. A lot of situations too, like we we can't really retract and rescind what we say. Because things are permanently on social media or on some type of a public forum, or once something has been said and the the the、um, the way in which they have been said, the tone that is used, it's really hard to to take back. Okay, once we form a strong opinion and we verbalize that opinion, it's very very difficult to take back. And so you're dealing with somebody who's aware of all of this. And so they're very calculated when it comes to the things that they say, how they communicate, what they communicate, and who they communicate these messages to. And from your perspective, you might feel like, oh my gosh, they are so cowardly. They are so 
unsent uh, they are so censored they are so repressed they are so scared they don't know what they want and so you you run through the gamut like these myriad of reasons why somebody or the other person might not you know express how they feel but i feel like there's a i feel like yes they they might be all of those things but the important thing is that they they have been repressed for a very very long time that was like a survival mechanism that was how they dealt with grief that was how they dealt with changes and that was like it's purely survival okay i don't blame people when they do things um on a purely survival basis even as an adult you know we're conditioned to behave a certain way and so i feel like it's hard for you to understand this person is very very hard for you because you are out and free and 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 you know un uh unaffected okay and you're very uncensored and so you don't understand how somebody could be uh so different from you so i feel like there's a lack of understanding here but i also feel like there are issues with the other person and i feel like a mix of cowardly a mix of stage fright a mix of social anxiety a mix of repression a mix of you know just um life experiences that makes them very very calculated when it comes to what they say calculated when it comes to what they um uh, to expressing their emotions okay so that's where we're at okay so that's the first thing with that karaoke situation uh the second image that i'm seeing here is um i have this little boy he's wearing a raincoat and his little backpack and it's like in the morning and um it's kind of drizzling outside and He's waiting for the school bus, okay? So he's about like 5 or 6. He's waiting for the school bus. The school bus is supposed to pick him up in front of his house, but he's in the porch because it's kind of sprinkling. And he's debating, you know, I don't want to go to school today. Kids are mean to me or, you know, I just don't want to go to school today. I don't I don't want to be in school. It's kind of rainy. I'd rather be home. I'd rather like and I don't feel that great. And I don't I feel like he doesn't feel that great. Um, it's the weather affecting him. but you know children they can't really verbalize these things so he's just like i i feel crummy i want to stay home today i should tell mom that i don't want to go home so he's like running through these uh thoughts in his mind and then he's like i don't want to go home i don't want to go i, I don't want to go to school i don't want to go to school i want to stay home and then um he's still deliberating in his mind should i go back in and tell mom i don't want to go to school and then just then the bus comes and the bus door opens and he's like I want to go to school. Should I just go back inside and tell mom? And then he was just he finds himself walking towards the bus. And then the door closes and the bus takes off because he took too long. Okay, so I feel like once again this would be you or another person that you're dealing with. And um I feel like it's a situation where it's uneasy. You have like a a gut reaction or a gut instinct on on what you should do. right like you 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 might have an uh, a disaffinity for something like a a lack of liking for something or an aversion to something or like just a repulsion towards something and then you're trying to rationalize like why do i feel this way about this person why do i feel this way about this situation and i feel like your intuition has been right your intuition is telling you you know that might not be the right person for you that might not be the right situation for you and crisis averted because i feel like at the end of the day the door closes He missed his bus, but he gets to stay home. And so in a way, it's sort of like a situation that can be a self-fulfilling prophecy as well. Okay? Taking too long to make a decision, first of all, do I go to school or do I stay home? Taking too long to make a decision. And then at the very last minute, the decision is made for you. That option is ruled out for you. And so in action I feel is as dangerous as like a uh, lack of action or doing something where your heart is not 100% committed in it it can lead to failure does that make sense because I'm feeling like there's a self fulfilling prophecy it's something that you're just like oh it's doomed to fail from the start I'm just going through the motions to do it but it's doomed from the start and because you're half assing it and because you're you're like just going through the motions and because you're also injecting a lot of just um self defeating negativity into a situation um it fails and i honestly feel like this is not you sagittarius this is somebody that you're dealing with where they're like constantly mired in a very very negative um mindset 
they don't look at the end goals. They don't look at you know pushing themselves past their limit. They 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 let fears and discomfort gets the best of them. They they don't challenge themselves. They're not inspired to be a better person. They're not you know、uh, grasping for these high ideals. So then whatever they do inevitably flops. And you might have witnessed this. You might have been、um, you know dealing with them when they go through life and making these decisions. And it's like it's a very the hardest people. For a Sagittarius、um, person to be around, are people who are very, very negative. Okay, I feel Sagittarius people are the most optimistic, are the most carefree, are the most like you know, it's gonna work out. Like just the fearless people that I've ever encountered. And I feel like you're dealing with someone who's a naysayer, who's very mired in, in negativity, who's、uh, constantly like. They do things, and they're just like, "Oh, it's not going to work out." So they're, they, they, they give up even before they even try. They give up even before the situation started, or they shut something down before it has an opportunity to get off the ground. And you're realizing it now. You're realizing that energetically they are affecting you. Okay. The other part of this that I want to emphasize is.、Um, He wanted to stay home, right? Like the little boy, he wants to stay home. He didn't say anything, and then、um, I, I feel like there's something here about you know tongue tie, not being able to speak, not having the right vocabulary,、um, not being not feeling feeling fearful, feeling afraid, feeling、um, censored. Okay, so. Those are the key words as we head into this month, and hopefully, these messages will provide a lot more clarity for you when you're dealing with inner、um, with another person that behaves this way. So, right off the bat, what I'm feeling is this is a month of major communications, okay? And especially as it relates to like feelings, emotions,、um, being like、uh, where where things are kind of laid bare. They're out in the open. They're happening very fast. This to me indicates usually like electronic communication, communication that comes out either physically in person or like electronic communication where they're coming at you very, very, very fast, and you have like a split second to respond, or、uh, timeliness when it comes to your response is very important. Okay, so there's a lot of communication here. If we're looking at the situation, I feel like if. In the past, there has been a channel of communication that has been blocked, where you feel like you have to literally pry the answers out of the lion's mouth. Okay, you have to like literally like like pull out answers,、um, command answers, or like demand it from another person. I feel like the floodgates are opening. So right off the bat, I feel like there's a situation. Where you are asking a lot of questions about a、um, to a person, or this is happening to you, and I feel like for many of you,、um, if it has been you know the past few months of like constantly communicating with someone, wanting clarity, wanting like certainty, wanting something solid and concrete, I feel like the floodgates are finally opening because you have been dealing with somebody. Who is very tongue-tied? Who's very afraid? Who is very calculated in the way that they communicate, in the way that they speak? And so I feel like you've been pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, and finally the floodgates open. You're getting the communication that you're looking for. What we have here is a really, really beautiful situation. We have here the Ace of Cups, and this is denoting to me new love. Okay, this is like a.、Um, An opening up of the floodgates, where feelings are finally expressed for the first time. You definitely have somebody who's coming into the picture, coming forward to make you an offer. And what I sense is you are always very、uh, courageous when it comes to being vulnerable. Okay, being vulnerable is like the hardest thing for anybody to do. You put your heart out there. You put your feelings out there. You made yourself known. You made yourself available. You know who you want, who you want to be with, and you have made that very, very clear from day one. I'm, I'm not playing games. I want this, and this is all that I want. And I feel like because you have been adamantly pursuing it, there's definitely somebody coming into the picture for reciprocity. To reciprocate this outpouring of love, somebody who's very touched, 
who's very like um, they might have been guarded in the past, but now they're in a position where they trust what you have to say, they trust your emotions, they trust your feelings, and they're still very much shy and trepidatious about making this big leap towards you, jumping in the water, um, you know, enjoying this relationship even, but. They're making an effort, okay? So I feel like it's slow, but it is very steady. And then I also feel like there was a situation in the past where somebody was too strong with their emotions. And I feel like they were too strong, too direct, too fast, too soon. And I feel like the other person got really scared. And they've had some time to mull things over and now they're coming back in to reciprocate, to have this conversation, to talk about things, to offer you, you know, they, they might say like, well, wait a minute, you're coming a little on a little bit too strong, but I do like you and I feel like, you know, let's take it slow. So I feel like there's somebody here who is wanting to slow things down. Not because they don't feel the same way, but because they're rational, and I feel like you know they 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 want to they they don't want to, their emotions to get the best of them. Okay, it's not a bad thing to slow things down, but I definitely see a situation where there is tremendous outpouring of love, and you're going to get that reciprocity between you and another person. Um, the other person has been thinking about you. Okay. We have here deep in contemplation when it comes to matter of the hearts, the Queen of Cups. Deep contemplation. How is this going to work? How is the future going to look? How are we going to work together as a unit? Where are we going to live? What are we going to do? How do we navigate each other's energies? How do we live in the same space? How do we share resources? This is like serious contemplation. Okay, The Queen, she's rational. And in this situation, I do feel like you're dealing with someone who is very mired in their emotions for you. Like they, it runs very, very deep. This is someone who's very, um, very maternal or paternal. So they have like a, like a, a parental energy about them. They might have children. They might be a. a I'm seeing somebody who like really knows how to take care of another person. They don't enter re uh, relationships unless it's the long haul. So they might have, you know, dated only like a few people, okay? And so when they date, they they think about long term. They think about, you know, the marriage, the engagement, the house, the kids, the uh, happily ever after. They don't rush into a situation just to see what happens if it doesn't work then you know we'll separate they don't do that they they don't play like that and so i feel like your direct energy might intimidate them might scare them and it might even make them feel like you're not here to stay like they might think you're not as serious they might think that you're a serial dater they might think you're after the thrill of the chase and they might not take you at your word or take you at face value or take you seriously so I feel like they've been thinking over this about you for a very very long time and <clears throat> emotionally they feel the affinity towards you they feel that pull okay um, I'm seeing a situation where somebody is definitely coming forward okay this is the chariot forward momentum two disparate energies working together moving the chariot in the same direction so I do see, and I say this a lot with um, Sagittarius, you and a, a partner who might be from, you know, like an interracial type of a situation, okay? Um, the traditional depiction of this card is the, we have the black sphinx or the black horse and the white horse um, working together to pull the chariot along. And I usually think of that as like an interracial couple two people who might be very culturally different, okay? So keep in mind, for example, you might be like uh, born in the same country and then one person, uh, well, you both might move to the United States and one person is still a lot more traditional, the other person might be very Americanized. So in a way, that's like still culturally different, okay? So I, I see variations of that in this card where you and the other person, there might be a lot of cultural differences that you have to learn about one another. You have to understand about one another in order to make it work. And so, 
there might have been a lot of difficulties in the past to, to overcome in this relationship as a unit. There might have been a lot of communication problems. You never gave up on it. You never threw in the towel because you knew intuitively that you know it, it was worthwhile. It was worth it, and you knew you felt how they felt about you. you. You felt it even though they never said it because they they were scared of their feelings. They were afraid of being found out. They were afraid of like you know um, how they felt. They were afraid. They were running from it, and I also feel like they were so. It caught them off guard, and the feelings were so strong that it was hard for them to verbalize it, and they were afraid of it. They didn't want to face it. They didn't want to admit to it. They didn't want to talk about it. But moving forward, I feel like there's a breakthrough here where the floodgates open, and this outpouring of love and emotions is definitely coming through. Where the other person is coming into the picture, wanting a conversation, and wanting to build. Okay. You have another character here, so that's I, I see one person who's very afraid, and then I have another person who's very calculated with their words, with the things that they do. They're very measured with with what they do.、Um, so this is one person here, and I, I see another person. And this person shows up here as the King of Pentacles. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'm not reading the signs anymore because I feel like you have crossovers. You have people with so many astrological placement that the signs, sun sign or moon sign or rising sign, it doesn't even matter anymore. But what I have here is the King of Pentacles. This is someone who's very, very hardworking. Okay, like、um, they have worked very, very hard for everything in their lives. Okay, this wasn't somebody. Who was、uh, born into wealth? They didn't have a trust fund. They didn't have a large inheritance from their deceased, you know, family members.、Um, they worked out in the fields. They might have callous hands. They might do something that's physically demanding. They don't care what they look like. They're not going to show up in a suit. They've worked really, really hard. They've had to hustle. They've had to go out and and take care of things and take care of business at a very young age. And when you're deprived of a childhood, when you've had to grow up really, really fast, when、uh, your whole life was all about work and responsibilities, you can be very, very emotionally absent, right? So I just want to, you to understand where this person is coming from.、Um, this is like the pillar of responsibility, okay? This is somebody who like、uh, make a lot of sacrifices. For the greater good, this is also somebody who really craves stability. They crave predictability. They crave、um, hard work. They 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 crave an opportunity to prove themselves. And so, just imagine you're dealing with someone like that, and when they look at you, you're hot, fiery, and passionate. You're very unpredictable. You're very uncensored. You're very no holds bar. You're very impulsive as well. I feel, but you're so lucky because your impulses don't get you in trouble. But Aries do, and I feel like to a certain extent, Aquarius and Leo, their impulses, you know, and Pisces, their impulses often get them in trouble. But I feel like you're you're ruled by you know Jupiter, which is the planet of luck. You have a guardian angel. And you never get yourself in sticky situations for very long. There's always an out for you, but but the point is, they look at you, and everything that you do is like runs counter to everything that they have done thus far to achieve everything in their life. So they look at you as a wild card. They look at you as kind of like it's exotic and and and、uh, fun and exciting and passionate, but it's um. It's unstable. That's how they perceive you. And so, this is not somebody that enters situation, relationships, friendships,、um, with like you know arms wide open. They're calculated with the things that they say. They're、um, calculated with、um, you know projecting outcomes. They crunch numbers. They they think about odds and probabilities. And I feel like the odds of them going after you is very low, mainly because they feel like it's a wild card. I feel though there's still going to be communication with this you and this person. This is what、um, I usually call like you know ringing the bell. Okay, this is like the lobby attendant. 
somebody coming in, making their presence known, ringing the bell, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to make their presence known. There's still going to be communication. They're still enthralled and um, seduced by you. And I also feel like they're still very much like wanting that connection. But I do sense, and I'm not into you know telling you to change your behavior or anything like that in order to be with this person. I just feel like it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some time for them to learn to trust you completely. It's gonna take some time for for the two of you to work out your differences. It's gonna take some time for the two for for this person especially to really open up. And in the meantime, the 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 love, the affection, the you know the chemistry is great, and um, the attention that you give them is really good for their ego. They really enjoy it. But I feel like there's a little bit more of a heart soul connection here. But I also feel like you're putting a lot of work in this situation. It is time for you to kind of like uh, step back a little bit and let this person come come forward towards you. So, don't take this burden upon yourself. Let this person share the burden. Let this person do the work. As soon as you realize that you can lay down these wands, you're gonna know that you know this person is so reliable. They're gonna pick up those wands and walk alongside you. So I feel like you. There's a situation here where you're pushing, pushing, and pushing, and you might need to take a breather, take a step back, and they're gonna start to come forward. Okay. So don't do things out of just um, don't do things out of that, that that impulse of emotion, needing to show the other person, needing to prove to the other person. I feel like it's time for you to kind of like give this connection a little bit of a rest because then you're gonna realize that they're gonna they're gonna come in and reciprocate. Um, what we have here is your ships finally coming into the picture. Okay. Um, I see a lot of career success here for many of you. I mean, aside from this situation, I do feel like you're in a position where you're in a leadership capacity. You're leading people, you're teaching people, informing people. People are coming by to ask for your opinions, your ideas, and things like that. And so you're in a really good pro position professionally. You have been spending a lot of time working on this area of yourself, either burying yourself from uh, in work or working on projects that really bring you a lot of joy and passion, like projects that are expansive, that are helpful to humanity, I feel in some way, and just projects that you closely, um, your values and the, the values of the projects are closely aligned. And because of that, I feel like you're um, hedging or you're on the verge of you know some major, major breakthroughs when it comes to your career. And because you're in this position, you have a lot of things going on. You have a lot of suitors in your in your periphery, and you have like you're just you know in a very very good space where your attention is not preoccupied or is not you know scattered and is not like um, caught up in some control situation where you want a certain outcome. I feel like you're in a very good, free, breathable space, and you know it's expansive. Because of that. I feel like energetically, you're allowing the right people to come into the fold for you. You're making room for the people that are that want to reciprocate, and you're laying down these burdens as well towards people that are not in the picture for your greater good or who are not willing to put in the time and the work and the effort. Okay, so I definitely see some major, major communication breakthroughs. The last card here that we have is the King of Swords. And the King of Swords is, um, once again, all the characters that you're dealing with, especially the two kings, King of Pentacles and King of Swords, these are not uh, like emotional types of people. They might feel that you're very emotional and uh, they might feel like your emotions fluctuate and so they want something a little bit more stable. And I feel either way, you have gone a long way when it comes to your uh, maturation level, when it comes to emotions, when it comes to work, when it comes to your ability to kind of like control your impulses, control yourself. And I feel like that makes it a lot easier for them in their interaction with you, in their communication with you, to be able to, you know, have like a conversation and feel like they can uh, express themselves and feel like you're 
to finally understand how sincere you are. Even though you say things, you're not like other people where they just say things that they don't mean. You are actually very open, very sincere, very honest with how you feel about them at all times. And they're starting to feel safe and comfortable in, in expressing themselves and reciprocating back at you. Okay, so I, I do see there's major communication breakthroughs here. And so I, I honestly feel like, you know, the, the goal um, or the theme for this month is you are dealing with someone who's repressed. You are dealing with somebody who came um, kind of like belatedly. They, they, they tell you things, like you ask them a question, you wanted to know it at that time. Okay? And I feel like they, they dragged their feet, they took their time. They get, didn't give you a response at that time. And they, they might have missed the boat with you. And I feel like they're kicking themselves over it. Okay? And that is why they're coming back, making their intentions known. That's why they're coming back. And they're starting to realize that there was a sense of urgency. There was a sense of like, you know, if you're not going to reciprocate, if it's something very simple, as easy as like, um, just telling me how you feel, and the other person was not able to reciprocate, I'm sensing that they, they kick themselves. I'm sensing that there's regret. I'm, I'm sensing that's why they're coming back in because they understand and they feel safe in the sincerity of your, the way in which you express yourself, okay? It's like you have been nothing but upfront and honest. And then I feel like the other person, it, it's almost like when you're dealing with so many sleazy people and then you meet like a really nice, honest one, it, is, it seems like it's too good to be true. That's what I feel is happening to your person, where you're very upfront and honest, and they're like, it's too good to be true. That person must be hiding something. That must be a facade. That must be a front. That can't be real. Okay? Um, they have their own hang-ups, Sagittarius, and you kind of just need to let it be. But honestly, I feel like, you know, there, there's going to be reciprocity coming into the picture and it's going to make you feel really, really good. Okay. I hope this reading resonates with you. I hope that um, it comes true for you in the month of October so that you can, you know, uh, know where you stand with people and know who's really important. Okay. Um, I, for those who have been emailing me, I don't do private readings anymore. I do have a colleague. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California and she is a psychic. She's she's phenomenal. I can't recommend her enough. If you are in, interested in a reading, please uh, get a reading through her. I've included a link in the description box below for her website where you can schedule an appointment for yourself. I do wish you all the best, Sagittarius, and best of luck with everything, okay? I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.